hey, it's me, LamarShoal.com from Lamar Show. But, you know, just put that, just kind of reverse that. You know what I mean. I don't have a .com in my name. But anyways, what I want to talk to you about is your emails, your autoresponder. How are your emails being looked at or received by, well, we'll just talk about one of the email clients out there, Gmail. This is the biggie, right? This is the granddaddy. Because if you look in your subscriber list, probably, I would say more than 80% of your subscribers have a Gmail address, right? So Google has created this tool. It's a website. It's free called Google Postmaster Tools. I'm going to show you this in a second. This is going to show you your spam rate and um, other things. Your Oh, IP reputation, DNA, uh, domain reputation. This, this is a pretty cool tool. I got a cough here. <clears throat> Sorry, it's been a long day, a lot of tea. All right, so what I want to do right now is take you over to my computer. I'm going to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Now, this is very important, right? And you're going to need a couple things set up ahead of time. I will tell you what those are when I start getting into just showing you and sharing my screen. So let's just do that right now. So the way you want to find Postmaster Tools, I just go simply like this. Just type in Google Postmaster Tools. It's right here. And that's going to bring you up to here. And you're just going to click on that very first link. The, when you get to it, the page is going to look exactly like this. Just click on the blue Get Started button. Now. I currently have two domains in here. Here, let me, it doesn't really matter what they are, but I currently have two domains in here right now. And you can see over in the status column, one's not verified, which is cool. I moved my website and that's why this happened. That's okay. And the other one right now is verified. So before I show you how to set up your domain, what I want to do is show you how you know the information the data that you'll get right so let me see let me shrink this back down just a bit all right so what I want to do I'm going to show you this is already verified I'm going to show you how to set this up like I said in a second so let's click on this domain I want to show you what why you need this tool and it's very very easy to set up right so first of all what you need to do is this is really important here your spam rate and what I normally do, like I don't look at just seven days. I'm gonna, I usually look at things around 120 days, 90 days, something like that. You want it over a period of time. So this is gonna show you as you're sending out emails, you know, for that day or that time, right? You know, the spam rate that you get. And you can see as I went along here, like on, going back in January, right, 13th. You know, this is, uh, I don't know the number, oh, yeah, this is just in percentage, just thinking there was a number here, but a half a percent. This one's just a little over a percent. This one's just, you know, 0.2%, but you can see, right, again, this is 1.2%. Then I went a ways here, and then all of a sudden, bloop, right, on the radar. But this is pretty good, well, you know, you always want to get this number low, right? So if you start seeing a lot of spam rate and it's high, like 1% or even more, you got to figure out, you know, what you're doing in your email. So maybe it's your subject lines, maybe it's your email content, maybe you're throwing too many links in your emails. There's a lot of reasons, but I don't want to talk about that in this video. I've done other videos in my email playlist on my channel. I talk about some of the stuff, right? But this, these columns down here, they just put it in numeric form for you. But, you know, if that helps, I take this and look at it general, right? You don't have to look at any details here, meaning, like, to get too specific. Like, I'm not going to look at, like... 0.05% versus 0.06% being worse, that type of thing. Just take a general consensus and do, and just look at this. Now, here's what I do, right? So I've got a where I'm not going to take you into my account or anything, but I'm going to look at this day right here, like on this January 20th day, right? Why was this up there, right? Why did I get this spam rating like up this high? So what I do, I actually go back in my AWeber, 
And so you'd go back in your autoresponder and go find that email that you sent out on January 20th. Well, you know, not you, but me, right? So I'd go in my email, Aweber and I'd spend time looking at that email and seeing why this happened. And same thing here for this day, right? So you know the day that you get the spam on. So that's one reason why you can, that's really good to use this tool. Now let's go into the next one here, IP reputation. All right, so again, I'm just over here on the, on the right, I have it set for 120 days. Now, this, when you look at a graph like this, you got these lines, the yellow and the green. Well, this doesn't really mean much to me, and it probably won't mean much to you. And if you know what this means, and if it really makes sense to you, put a comment down below in this video. But because I send my emails from Aweber, this is gonna be the IP that's involved, okay? It's not gonna be my IP, it's gonna be Aweber's IP. So if you have a different autoresponder, it's gonna be their IP. Um, the only time that this would actually come into play would have to pay attention if you were a real geeker and you wanted to create your own email service, right? You could do it, there's software out there, you can set up a little server and you would create your server that you would send out your own emails on. That would have its own IP address. That's the IP that you'd be working, looking at for reputation. But if you're like me, you have an autoresponder, <clears throat> then it's their IP address. Now, Aweber has a bank of IPs set aside. It's like 512 of them, to be exact. And they're all in a row. I'd, if you ever want to know, what Aweber IP addresses are that they send them out on, I can let you know. I got it from their help. You don't really need to know them, but your IPs, they've got a whole bank of them. They got a group of IPs set aside. So one day your email will go out in this one, another time will go out in this one. If you're doing follow-up and a follow-up email goes out, that's all on a different IP address too. So they're always changing those and there's reasons. I'm not gonna even get into the, some of those here at all, but this, data right here as far you know from sending from an autoresponder you just don't want to pay attention to this one okay you don't really need to let's go into domain reputation this one is something you definitely want to pay attention to so if you're watching this video right now ears up ears open pay attention because this is your domain for what domain is this this is the domain from your private email right so i have a domain and I have a private email address, right? So I won the name cheap, I registered the domain, I also bought my private email from them. All right, so this is the domain that I'm using for a return address in Aweber. So this is a pretty cool tool too, because even if you get a brand new IP for you, right, and you get buy a private email address for it, Maybe somebody else before you that pr had that domain of yours might have been using that domain and sending out all kinds of spammy email, right? They're done with the domain, right? Now you come along and happen to register that same exact domain, buy a private email address for it. So you might get all kinds of like poor ratings here and you just start out, you don't even know why. That's possible that that could happen, right? So in that case, you want to just, you know, just let that IP go, get a new one, buy a whole, you know, then you'd need to get a new private email address for that new domain and just try it again. So this is a great way to go into Postmaster Tools because if you didn't know this, all your emails could be hit in the spam box and you have no idea why. This is a good starting point. Now you could see for me, my domain that I'm using right is sticking here at medium so that tells me that I probably I've been using it for a while so I need to get go buy a domain and then buy a private email address for that and then configure that in Aweber and this should then go up to a high all right let's talk about the next one here so we talked about domain and next we want to talk about feedback loop you don't even need this one at all. Like I said, if you're a geeker and have your own 
mail server, this would make the, you would want to use this. But you, you just just you know you're probably like me. You got your autoresponder, so ignore this one here, right? Just to let you know that it's there. Authentication. All right. What this has to do is with um, DKIM and SPF. DKIM. I can't remember exactly what it stands for now, but it's to do with other email clients when you send your emails out it validates your domain SPF is the same thing it's a framework that's used that reports your um, <laughs> sorry your DKIM stuff right so you need to set DKIM and SPF up in your autoresponder it's an additional thing you have to do and it's not has nothing to do with postmaster tools that we're talking about today this is to get your deliverability rates up that you know for your autoresponder so you need to set up SPF and DKIM typically well the way you do this is creating a couple DNS keys for your domain and your autoresponder company will show you how to do that if you have Aweber I've got two at least two emails I mean sorry videos to show you how to set up Aweber your DKIM and SPF if you have active campaign I've got a video to show you how to do that as well so I take you through really nice and slow so this is pretty cool now you can see how your your DKIM and the SPF are doing I'm not going to get into some of the details here because I want to show you how to hook this up but this is something there's online help right here and it's really easy to understand right and it, it, they take you through and how all this works so you can go through all that on your own time so we did on authentication so we're not going to talk about encryption um, all email going out from autoresponders definitely Aweber active campaign entreport send lane blah 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 they all send email out encrypted even if you're sitting there typing away in your gmail account and boop, hit that send button gmail sends it encrypted it goes without saying email goes out encrypted so this is why you're going to get a blue line 100 percent now again if you're the geeker i keep talking about and you create your own mail server hey you know to each his own why you want to do that you know it's fine to each his own this is you would have to set that security up you know the, i'm sorry the encryption from your end but if you use an autoresponder it's already a done deal so it's done forget about it all right deliverability sometimes like here you're going to get like these different de deliverability messages right so you get this thing error rate i'm not sure what this is but i'd have to go down uh i thought this used to have the numeric stuff down here because it would exp it would show you the date so i don't know what this means here error rate like that's pretty high 8.2 so i don't know what that means i'd have to dig into this this is the first time i saw this you can see though this is usually flat as you're going along all these days i just had this one outlier here not sure what that is but this is the information you're going to get from google tool master okay um now this is only all these numbers uh, you know, these graphs this data is only for gmail addresses that is it all right just so you know that but because you know it's a huge gmail's huge in your subscriber list it's this is definitely worth knowing so let's go back to postmaster tools i'm going to show you how to set one of these up okay so what you want to do is come down here click on the red plus button and when you come in here all it's going to do is enter the domain that you want to have authenticated right so i'm going to put in i think i spelled it right so enter your domain right use the authentication okay so we're going to have to you know spf dkim referred to all right so let's go here and i'm going to hit the next button so i got my domain you don't need http none of that stuff just put your domain dot if it's a com or net or whatever right just put whatever it is boom hit next so having success has been added to and verify domains okay have more than one domain okay you just can read on with that so we're done we're not going to add another we're going to hit done so we just added this domain right down here having success online 
I think what happened is I've already previously had this domain in there and that's why it went to verify. This isn't, yeah, so let's see here. Um, now, because the other thing you gotta know too is, let's see, oh, we're back on seven days. Let's hit this 120. Yeah, so let's see, it does spam rate, yeah. Okay, because it's just entered here again, now I'm telling it to start logging every day. So you're gonna have to give it a couple weeks before you see this information. So what I'm gonna try to do, let me hit the red plus button. We'll sneak in, I'm gonna try to sneak in just a different um, domain here. Um, I'm trying to think here. Let's see what happens here. So I'm gonna just enter this domain. Okay, now when you get to this box here, this is what I wanted to show you before, right? You need to add an additional DNS key to your domain. So the domain I just typed in would have a private email address on it, right? And now already, so I've gotta add this TXT type DNS record. So I've gotta go, since I would have this domain here in Namecheap, I've got to go into the name, into Namecheap. I got to go to my DNS records and I have to add this record. So it's going to be a TXT type and I'm going to copy this whole hot mess right here. Boom. Just copy that to the clipboard. I would then go over into Namecheap or GoDaddy or wherever you have your domain hosted. Paste this in. So you're going to go into DNS records, create a TXT type paste this information in the value column the host column you leave empty and then that's it okay and i believe you, then what you want to do right once that's all set up like so my example a name cheap i saved it i'm done you want to come over here and click on the verify button then if um sorry google postmaster tools will go out to that domain and look and then it will turn green and say verified then you just have to wait i mean i would say at least two weeks before you see most of this information that i you know showed you at the beginning of this video coming in and i really apologize for making this video so long but this is google postmaster tools this is awesome to use look if you've got any questions Put a comment down below. Hey, if you want to see more videos like this on AWeb or anything, let me know like what you want to see on a video. Maybe I've already got it done in one of my playlists. So you can go over to Lamar Show on YouTube. Go check my channel out. Oh, by the way, before you leave, why don't you subscribe so you'll get my next video. All right, I'll see you then.